A depressing thing is the rubbish you see in the newspapers about Europe and the European Union. Euro myths, stories that are gross distortions of the truth or even wholly false. Ones I've seen include that EU law now forbids the owners of dead pets to bury them unless they pressure cook them first. That Brussels now requires every fishing boat to carry a minimum stock of 200 condoms so that the fishermen can have safe sex when they're not engaged in catching fish. That Brussels has a plan, instead of burying our dead, we'll have to liquefy their corpses and pour them down the drain. Some Euro myths are about justice. A favourite one is about criminal justice, that the European countries have something terrible called the inquisitorial system, invented by the Pope and Napoleon, under which everyone is presumed guilty instead of innocent, courts are controlled by public prosecutors, and public prosecutors can have you arrested at any time and held in prison indefinitely without trial. And if we don't leave Europe, Brussels is going to make us have that system here. Nigel Farage, the leader of the UK Independence Party, regurgitated this one in a piece in The Independent just before Remembrance Day. It provoked a lot of online comment. One of them, from an approving reader, said, point out what Farage has written that's wrong. You can't, can you? Well, as a Cambridge law professor who's worked on European criminal justice for the last 20 years and written books about it, I think I can and I'm going to try. Nigel Farage's piece has so many muddles and confusions in it that I hardly know where to start. But let's get going with the headline. Innocent until proven guilty? Not under the EU's justice system. Corpus juris, used in Europe, is not a system of justice we should be welcoming. The corpus juris he refers to isn't used in Europe. It isn't used anywhere. It's a proposal written by a group of academics for a scheme to combat fraud on European community finances, which was published back in 1997. What was proposed was a standard list of fraud offences to be applicable in all member states, a standard list of powers for investigating them, and a European public prosecutor, a bit like our serious fraud office, with authority throughout Europe to investigate and prosecute. The Corpus Juris proposal was demonised as a Brussels plot to force us to have the inquisitorial system by the Daily Telegraph in an issue in 1999. And this view of the matter was then internalised by Eurosceptics. I'm afraid the journalist who wrote it had never looked at the Corpus Juris project and he got his take on it from a travesty of it that had appeared in a small circulation Eurosceptic magazine. Unlike the journalist and Nigel Farage, I do know what is in it. It claims nothing about suspects being presumed guilty, as in continental Europe. I know this because I was part of the team of academics that helped write it. And we might like to look at Article 31, which says, any person accused of one of the offences set out above is presumed innocent until his guilt has been established legally by a final judgment which has acquired the authority of res judicata. Secondly, Farage is wrong to imagine that in criminal justice systems in continental Europe, the presumption of innocence, which is so highly valued, quite rightly in the UK, is reversed so that everybody is presumed guilty. Um, here's the preliminary article to the French Code de procédure pénale. Toute personne suspectée ou poursuivie est présumée innocente tant que sa culpabilité n'est pas établie. And here is an article of the Italian Constitution. 
l'imputato non è considerato colpevole sino alla condanna definitiva. Actually, in Italy, they take that very seriously indeed, to the point of saying that jail sentences can't be carried out against people until all their last rights of appeal have been finished. And that is the reason why Mr. Berlusconi is still at liberty in Italy now, even though a four-year jail sentence has been theoretically imposed upon him. And the presumption of innocence is enshrined throughout Europe by the European Convention on Human Rights, another hate object to Eurosceptics, Article 6.2 of which says, everyone charged with a criminal offence shall be presumed innocent until proved guilty according to law. The third point I'd like to take up is where Farage says that the criminal justice systems in Europe were invented by the Holy Inquisition in Rome and that the system of combining the prosecutor and judge is something which formed the basis of the legal system in Europe and he says they are no longer the same person but are instead salaried civil servants working cheek by jowl. This is completely wrong. Judges in continental Europe aren't civil servants dependent on the government. They're independent, both of public prosecutors and the government, like they are in the UK. And they have to be so because Article 6 of the European Convention on Human Rights again requires this, and Strasbourg would condemn the countries concerned if they were not. In some countries, judges and public prosecutors train together and can even move from one job to the other in the course of their career. But while they're judges, they're judges and they act independently. France, it's true, has a figure called the juge d'instruction, an investigating judge who in serious cases will take charge of the investigation. But the juge d'instruction doesn't take part in the final decision on guilt or innocence, which is made by an independent court, and the juge d'instruction doesn't take orders from the public prosecutor. Actually, juge d'instruction, thanks to their independence, have an honourable history of sorting out corrupt politicians, which is why some dodgy politicians would be very keen to abolish them. The fourth point I'd like to take up is when Nigel Farage says the EU wants us to introduce a system under which British citizens could be locked up indefinitely without charge or trial. I don't know where he got that idea from. It certainly isn't in the Corpus Juris project. Under the Corpus Juris project, the European public prosecutor would have had the right to request the court to remand a person in custody for up to six months, extensible by a further three. And the court would have been able to grant this if satisfied that, I quote, good reasons exist for believing it necessary to stop him from committing such an offence or from fleeing after committing it. And before making such an order, the judge would have to be satisfied that the measure is lawful and regular as well as that the principles of necessity and proportionality are respected. To further make the point about EU criminal justice, meaning people would be locked up indefinitely without trial, Farage mentions the case of Andrew Simiou. The Simiou case is indeed very distressing, and the facts, as many of you will know, were that he was uh, suspected by the Greek authorities of a manslaughter and was handed over under a European arrest warrant where he was kept in Greece for two years before the Greek criminal justice system got around to actually trying him and at the end he was acquitted. What was wrong in that case to my mind wasn't that the Greek authorities wanted to try him for manslaughter for which there was reason to suspect him initially nor that the British government handed him over under a European arrest warrant. It was that the Greek criminal justice system managed to take uh, two years to deal with him and for one of those years held him in prison 
when there was no reason to hold him in prison at all. That was nothing to do with the corpus juris or with EU criminal justice or to do with the European arrest warrant because it could have happened under the existing extradition arrangements previously in force in Europe. It's a fault with some continental criminal justice systems that they're slow and they're over inclined to hold people in prison pending trial. And the EU, insofar as the EU is involved in this, is worried about it and been trying to do something about it. Indeed, several years ago, it published this green paper um, floating the idea of EU legislation to require all member states to limit the periods of pre-trial detention. And I regret to say that the official response of the British government to this was, keep out. We don't think this is an appropriate topic for EU legislation. I think this is a shame. There's one sentence in Nigel Farage's piece with which I wholeheartedly agree, which is where he says, our traditions of habeas corpus should be held up as a beacon of fairness. So indeed they should. And instead of shrinking away from the efforts of the EU in matters of criminal justice for fear of contamination, as seems to be the policy of our current government to do, we should be right in there trying to see that the better features of our system are made general throughout Europe. But before we do that, we should be cautious. We should remember what it says in the Bible, cast out first the beam that is in thine own eye, and then shalt thou see clearly to pull out the mote that is in thy brother's eye. A Swedish colleague of mine, who was involved in European criminal justice, said to me one day, when your compatriots start talking to me about the superiority of the common law, I silence them with two words, Birmingham 6. You may have been watching, like me, that Danish series, Borgen. There was one number when there was a tabloid newspaper editor who was offered a piece by a serious journalist about the European Union, and he rejected it. Don't try to give me a story about the EU, he said. It's not sexy, and it's too complicated for our readers to understand. That's part of the trouble. It is complicated. And because it's complicated, there's all the more reason why journalists and politicians should look carefully into the facts before they sound off about them. And we should all understand that nonsense about the EU doesn't cease to be nonsense because it's written by an established politician or printed in a reputable newspaper.